Okay. This is how I get my latest and greatest information and ideas. One of the yeah. earliest uses of computers in the military was in the development of simulators for aircraft. While flight simulators have been around since World War II, the early models were mechanical. The computerized simulators were developed in the early 1970s. Today's simulators include extremely sophisticated graphics displays and give the instructor almost complete control over the student pilot's environment. One of the leading companies in computerized flight simulation is Singer Link. The Link simulators have been developed for military aircraft like the B-52 bomber, C-130 transport, F-16 and F-111 fighters. Now, emulator class and Cobra in the rain. At Indian Town Gap, Pennsylvania, Ooh, Singer Link simulator is being used to train pilots on the UE or UH-1 helicopter. The system uses two Honeywell 790 mainframes to process a variety of analog and digital inputs. We feed um, analog information, analog input information through the ADD converter into the 790s. Ooh, ADD converter. Ooh. It's shuffled to number 2790, which performs the equation of motion calculations, get them back to number one, and output it to the hydraulic cylinders Whoa. and the cyclic pedals. So control movements from uh, inputs that change with time, right. cyclic the pedals or throttle position, oh. and analog inputs. Oh. Digital inputs from oh, the switches. Yeah. switches for the ah, This is called research. The same. The challenge for the computer, of course, is to make the simulation realistic. That means enough computational speed to update the displays in a meaningful way. Oh. There's two type of inputs that are DIs. There's two type of outputs, AOs, which vary it's, with time. It's breaking up my signal. Which are neurologic. Oh. Uh, well, I'm good. I put up the umbrella. Uh, oh, that so looks like... Oh, yeah, it's a computer. It's a computer. It's a computer. Oh, hey. Come on, there's a Raspberry Pi in there somewhere. While early simulators were thought of as second best to actual in flight training, oh, they were. In 1986. The military says the new computerized simulators are not only cheaper, but better than the real thing. Oh! Oh. It does represent flying in the clouds. Hmm. I wonder if there's opinions on that out there. However, one of the added benefits that we have is the introduction of emergency procedures. Uh -oh. We can actually uh, input 108 different malfunctions into the computer. Oh, yes, I learned about that on my flight thing. Somebody turned the engine off on me. We have had at least two recorded saves up to now where oh. individuals have practiced some of the emergency procedures in the simulator. Uh, have learned them to a very high degree and have subsequently had the same emergency in the aircraft. Oh. And they attribute their saving the aircraft and, of course, people's lives in the aircraft with their actual simulator. Do that simulator! Whoa! Oh. Computerized oh, get simulators feature oh. sophisticated yeah, displays I'm, I'm doing that not only give the pilot well, detailed visual feedback, but also simulate uh. the use of the plane's weapons Ooh. systems. One oh. of the first applications is on the Army's Cobra attack helicopter. Systems on the aircraft can be operated. Uh, the benefit to this is uh, the weapon systems are so expensive to operate, and ammunition is so expensive, and the limited areas that we can actually train in are so far away uh, that they will be able to fire the weapon systems and to stay proficient oh, in the weapon systems. Oh, and now, today, we move for, uh, forward. Uh, really does, a cobra they do this and really kill totally people. Uh, huh. You're right, it's better than the real thing. In the hmm. Virtually all day long. Hmm. These computerized simulators are designed to train men to operate sophisticated military equipment. But in just a minute, we'll okay. take a look at military robots hmm. that don't need any men at all. Oh, in 1980. Oh, six. Well, I wasn't in trouble yet. <laughs> This may not look much like a tank, but someday it could evolve into one. Ooh. As robots become an increasingly important part of America's military yeah. strategy. This is Terrigator, an ALV, or Autonomous Land Vehicle. Oh. It's being developed here at Carnegie Mellon University in mm. Pittsburgh. 